Okay, welcome back to Susan Can Create. I'm doing a series of videos here, short little videos, um, some tips and tricks on you know planning, uh, planning dinner parties and theme parties. Um, this one's on menu planning, and um, so next to next to planning um, the theme and decorating, uh, menu planning is probably my absolute favorite thing to do. I plan it so far in advance, it's ridiculous. Um, but that's me. I love it and I change it like 50 times probably. But I love looking at menus. I love looking at food. I love doing food research. I'm just, you know, I'm a nerd that way. But um, sometimes the menu can come before the theme. Sometimes it does. There's a, a food item that I really want to make. And so I'll build a dinner party around it. Most of the time, I know my theme. I, if something comes to me, I'll see an inspiration piece somewhere where I'm out shopping and I'll build a whole dinner party around that piece. Um, I back into the party based on a, a piece of decor. That's usually how I roll. But, um, but once, you, once you get your theme, um, then you have to look at your menu. Now, depending on your level, of experience what level of cook I mean you could be a beginner cook or you could be a professional chef um, yeah, obviously the menu is going to be different if you're a beginner cook and you want to start hostessing please 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 don't stress yourself out you may be the best hostess in the world and a lousy cook or just a beginner cook you don't have to be a lousy cook Susan that's a terrible thing to say you may be just maybe you don't even like cooking but you love hostessing okay you know Give a boost to the economy and go out and buy the food. Go uh, hire a caterer. That's what they're there for. That's great. You can do either one of those. You know, you don't have to cook at all. Okay, then you want to decide, um, are you, what style of dinner party do you want? First of all, do you want a buffet? Um, do you want it plated? Uh, that's where you plate it and then you serve it, just the plate. Um, are you going to have tapas, which are little individual plates? Are you going to do just appetizers, or are you going to include appetizers as part of the meal? Are you going to do family style, where you do these big plates of food, and they, you know, you sit them down on the dinner, and everybody passes it around? Are you going to do barbecue, you know, which is real casual style, um, formal, very elegant, very elevated um, style food? Is it going to be hot dinner, or is it going to be cold? You're going to be all cold dinner. Are the guest restrictions? You need to know this for sure. Um, do they have any allergies to food? You know, are they, how about gluten? They got a problem with gluten? If they're really, really super sensitive to gluten, you got to know that when you're cooking because if these people are super sensitive to gluten, not only do you have to know that, but how you cook things and how you uh, keep things separate in your cook kitchen is a big deal for people that have a, a severe gluten allergy. Are they um, vegetarians? And you got any vegetarians in there? Do you have any vegans in there? Um, are there foods that they just don't like? I mean, if I went to, me, if I went to a dinner party and somebody served the main entree was liver, I'd be eating everything else. They better have other things around there, but don't you go putting liver down in front of me because... This girl, mm -mm, not eating it. Next, uh, are you going to do foods that uh, follow your theme? Like if you're having uh, an Italian dinner, which I'm, I'm having uh, my next, uh, well, I'm having one here soon. Um, are you going to have all Italian foods? What is your theme uh, dinner? Um, start, and then I start by figuring out my entree. My entree is my first dinner, or my first food meal, and everything else I build around it. So I start there. And then your entree needs to match your cooking level, like I said. Uh, don't complicate things, okay? Just don't complicate things. I like to find, I like to do dinners that can be done uh, a lot ahead of time at least most of it, so the very final cooking is all that needs to be done. All the prep can be done way ahead of time because if you're part of the dinner party, if you're not, if you're just the cook and the dinner party's in there, um, that's fine, but if you're part of that dinner party, you don't want to be spending the whole time in the kitchen, okay? Um, 
So make sure that you are thinking about that. If your if your entree is a really heavy meal, if it's real heavy, it's real rich, then you need to have some side dishes that are lighter that go along with that, and you need to build your meal around that. Maybe um, are you going to have a soup or a um, a starter soup or a starter salad? Don't get a real heavy soup if you're having a real heavy entree. You got to think about what you're putting together with that. And the same thing with appetizers. If you're going to have some appetizers, which I do recommend, especially if you're offering, you know, welcoming drinks and various things like that. But if, you're, if your dinner is like three or four courses and if it's heavy, then you want to have something light. Just have something light for the appetizers. If you're having just a quick casual meal or something, you can adjust the appetizers. That's fine. Um, and the same way with your dessert. Your dessert, your dessert can be, you know, ah, that can be your aha moment too, because dessert is a lot of times what people remember about the meal, because um, it's the final meal. It's the final uh, portion, course of the meal. So um, think about it. If you're, if you're doing a heavy meal, you probably want a small, light dessert. So people enjoy it, because otherwise they're just, ooh, you know, it's like, a real heavy to get down they want something but mm. and so make it you know small and light and ever so yummy okay so um let's see if you want you know if you're going to do a buffet style meal buffet style meals are great too but um make sure you have a lot of variety make sure you have a lot of variety now they don't have to be big old huge dishes of things but you want to have a lot of variety because people, when people look at a buffet table, they want to see lots of variety there because that, that visually stimulates it. That's what makes it pretty. That's what makes it fun for them to choose from is all of the choices. And, and that's about it for those. That's just kind of some ideas for, for you. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Please know to subscribe, like I said, Subscribing gets these things put right on, you know, these will be right in my channel. Be easy for you to find all of these tips that I've been putting on there so you can go back and find them very, very quickly. And that'll be it. I'll be putting these out periodically for you. I hope you enjoyed them. And everyone take care and look for my Valentine's video, which will be coming out in um, probably, well, less than a week. Take care, everyone. This is Susan, signing off. Bye-bye.